Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats. Welcome to Northeastern University's third annual Academic Honors Convocation. It's our celebration of scholarly achievement. Before we begin, however, I'd like to ask all of you to join me in a moment of silence for those, of, of who, for those that were affected by the bombing at the Boston Marathon. Thank you. On behalf of the faculty and staff, I congratulate all of the recipients that are being honored today. Whether you're receiving a university honor or whether you're being recognized for a prestigious national award. 
Today, you join other distinguished members of our community of scholars. Your program includes a list of the participants, uh, the list of the scholars, the ones that are receiving awards today, as well as those that have uh, received them uh, previously. It's now my pleasure to introduce the president of Northeastern University, Joseph Aoun. Thank you and good afternoon. First, let me welcome you to the third, this is our third annual uh, Academic Honors Convocation. And for me, it is one of the most important events uh, of the year. Let me start by sharing some good news. Today, two of our uh, students who were injured are back home. They, I saw one on campus, so this is great. And, and frankly, you know, I want to, to say that they, were, they came immediately here, at least one of them, the first Sarah, and wanted to be part of this community, wanted to be part of her community. So when you see them, just give them a hug. Give them a hug, they, they want it, they need it. But also I want to acknowledge the early respondents who were there, the students in PT uh, and their advisors. They were absolutely uh, marvelous. And I can tell you, this hasn't been easy. I also want to acknowledge the nursing students who were there. And we keep receiving, even today I received emails from people who are not related to Northeastern mentioning the nursing students at Brigham, at Mass General, at uh, Tufts, at BMC, that, who are our alumni and who have been wonderful. Our, the, our community is a great community. I also want to acknowledge those who kept us here as a community, the public safety, the RAs, the staff. You have done a marvelous job and once again, <clears throat> I want to thank you uh, here, and we will do it in many places. Whenever you see them, it's okay, give them a hug, even if they have a beard. Uh, let me acknowledge uh, the members of the platform and some of the trustees who are here with us. We have three trustees, uh, Carol Shapazian, Trustee Shapazian, Trustee McHugh, and Trustee Billy Carter. I was talking to Trustee Shapazian and she said, boy, do we need good news. And yes, we need good news. Our community comes together when there is sorrow and there is tragedy, but also it comes together to celebrate the accomplishments of this special community. And this is what we wanted to do three years ago, start a tradition to celebrate the accomplishments, the achievements of this community, because this community is strong because of each one of you, each member of the staff, the faculty, the students. And, you know, some of you have, you know, mentioned to me that, okay, this community is growing and this community is changing. And it is true. It is growing. It's changing because the world is changing. We're not standing still because the world is not standing still. But what keeps us together is some values that have been dear to this uh, community since its founding. We are very engaged with the, with the world. We see that on a daily basis. We saw it at the marathon. We saw it after the marathon. And this engagement is the engagement of each one of us. And that is not something that you find in many places. So our growth is based on keeping our values permanent and keeping the sense of community permanent. I was mentioning the other day to a person from the corporate world that we have a big celebration for those who are retiring. And he laughed and he smiled and he said, oh, you know, in our world when somebody retires, we give them 24 hours. Here, they never, they never leave the place. They're always connected with the place. Whether you are students, you're alumni for life, whether you are staff, you're staff for life, and whether you are faculty, you're faculty for life. 
That's what makes our community special. It didn't start 10 years ago. It started in 1898, and it will be here with us way after each one of us is gone. So what we're celebrating today is really the excellence and the permanence of our community. So I'm going now to, to ask the provost to start the program. Thank you very much. Each year, the Goldwater Scholarship Committee names 300 Barry M. Goldwater Scholars from colleges and universities across the country. This year, Julia Ebert, a member of the class of 2015, is among this outstanding group. A behavioral neuroscience major, Julia has distinguished herself as a mentor and as a researcher. She is collaborating with faculty on a study of human motor control in the Northeastern University Action Lab and plans to pursue a PhD in neuroscience. The Fulbright Scholarship is a nationally competitive award that enables American students to study, conduct research, or teach overseas for a year. It gives me the greatest pleasure to recognize our 2013 Fulbright winners. Lauren Burns, a biology major, will study at the University of Heidelberg in Germany, where she hopes to pursue a master's degree in molecular biosciences. Lauren boasts an outstanding academic record and has extensive research experience at Northeastern and Harvard Medical School. She has also worked at a private sector biotechnology lab outside of Boston. Our next Fulbright winner, Lucas Schepner, is also pursuing science-related study, but from a very different angle. A journalism major, Lucas is among five students chosen for the Fulbright Young Journalist Program in Germany, where he plans to investigate the economic and environmental consequences of fracking. Also studying in Germany is Hollis Tommen, a linguistics major who was chosen for a Fulbright English teaching assistantship. In addition to teaching experience, she has served as a research assistant at Harvard University and studied language acquisition on a research co-op in Germany. Hollis plans to pursue bilingual education advocacy after her, after her Fulbright. The Hodgkinson Award is one of the highest honors that a senior at Northeastern can receive. The award is based primarily on distinguished scholastic achievement with consideration of character, leadership qualities, co-op experience, and service. It is my pleasure to present this year's Hodgkinson Awards. International Affairs Major Brian Hensky is a presidential global global scholar who adroitly integrated his classroom learning with his goal of a career in foreign policy. On co-ops with federal agencies, he assessed terrorism threats and analyzed political, economic, and leadership developments in Africa. Fluent in Swahili, Brian also undertook a dialogue of civilizations in Kenya and co-founded the Northern, Northeastern University Swahili Club. Our second Hodgkinson Award winner is Bick Jade Huang. A pharmacy major, Jade displayed a passion for education and healing throughout her college career. Following two pharmacy co-ops at Massachusetts General Hospital, Jade returned to her home country of Vietnam for a unique co-op experience 
managing the development of an iPad application that collects information about medications. Her leadership experience spans numerous service initiatives and student activities. Following graduate, following graduate school, she plans to pursue a career in global health care. Electrical and computer engineering major Fernando Quivera was a volunteer lab assistant as a freshman, an experience that led to research co-ops at Northeastern, a research-based study abroad in Spain, and a co-op in breast cancer research at Massachusetts General Hospital. An international student from Ecuador and a member of the Electrical Engineering Honor Society, Fernando plans to pursue graduate work focused on advancing the healthcare industry. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to introduce the 2013 Presidential Global Fellows. These outstanding students have demonstrated excellence in academic achievement, leadership, and innovative global experience. Only a select few of our Presidential Global Scholars are considered for the fellowship. They are chosen by a selection committee and they must be approved by the President. Our first Global Fellow is International Affairs Major Miguel de Corel. With four Global Dialogue of Civilization trips, two international co-ops, two international field research projects, Miguel's undergraduate experience has spanned 16 countries. His studies fostered a passion for diplomacy and humanitarian action, and his global work enabled him to uh, delve into security and disarmament research with prestigious international organizations. Miguel is focused on a career as a diplomat for NATO or the European Union. Caitlin Ferguson. A communication studies major was selected as a global fellow by virtue of her efforts to help alleviate global poverty through entrepreneurship. She pursued that goal in co-ops with two innovation nonprofits, Root Cause in Boston and the Deshpande Foundation in India, and through a social enterprise institute field study in South Africa. Caitlin plans to continue her work in the developing world and pursue a master's degree in social enterprise or international development. Congratulations. Congratulations. Doctoral student represent the future of academia, so it is especially gratifying to honor several of our most talented and committed doctoral students. Our first 2013 Graduate Research Award winner is Rand Gayard, a doctoral candidate in economics. His research focus is the beverage curve, which describes the relationship between job vacancies and unemployment. His work has generated interest from researchers and policymakers due to its implication for monetary policy. Rand has served as an economic consultant at the Brookings Institution and is currently a visiting scholar at the Boston Federal Reserve, an honor generally reserved for distinguished faculty members. Next, we honor doctoral candidate in biology, Catherine Matassa. Her work in marine biology focuses on chemical cues released by predators and their impact on prey. She has produced some of the first experimental tests of theory on how prey manage such risk and ecological consequences of this behavior. Catherine is a co-author of six articles 
in top peer review journals. She has five first author papers in preparation. Finally, please recognize Gregory P.M., doctoral candidate in physics. Gregory is known nationally as one of the 50 most promising young researchers in theoretical elementary particle physics. He works in two areas of particle theory. The early discovery of new physics at the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland, and analysis to determine the nature and identification of dark matter in the universe. Gregory is a co-author of 13 papers published in leading peer-reviewed journals. In the area of teaching, the first recipient of the 2013 Graduate Teaching Award is Daniela Heprin. Doctoral candidate in counseling and applied educational psychology. Her teaching is characterized as dedicated, enthusiastic, and truly outstanding. She describes her teaching philosophy as following the scaffolding model, which supports the learning of concepts and skills at a deeper level. Daniela's hands on supportive teaching style makes her an excellent resource for students. Our second graduate teaching awardee is Elizabeth Markle, a doctoral candidate in counseling psychology. Elizabeth grounds her teaching in enthusiasm, curiosity, humanity, and application. She is dedicated to her student, and her teaching supervisor describe her as personable, authentic, interested, and spunky. Her students rank her among the best teachers they have had at Northeastern. To honor dedication to service, we recognize Sarah Gujal with the 2013 Graduate Community Service Award. A Jewish doctor candidate, Sarah is the founder and director of an international nonprofit organization Global Potential, which promotes the advancement of disadvantaged youth in the U.S., Latin America, and France. Sarah is widely recognized for her commitment to human rights and her work with Boston area high school students. Elisa Benetti is the winner of the 2013 Graduate Experiential Learning Award. Elisa is a doctoral candidate in audiology whose passion and dedication for her field shows in her clinic work. She has embraced the teaching and mentorship and she worked with Children's Hospital Boston to create a curriculum for a hands-on pediatric hearing diagnosis course at Northeastern. Congratulations to all. Before we move to the next uh, section of our program, let me mention that if you're wondering why the Goldwater recipients and the Fulbright recipients didn't come here is for a simple reason. First of all, I want them to come here in a second, but their awards are going to be given by the Goldwater Foundation and the Fulbright uh, Foundation. However, I want them to come here and have a picture with the provost and me, especially that Lucas was in fact in working for the Huntington News and he made drawings of me and some people told me they were awful but I think he made me look better than I am. So <laughs> let's all come and have a picture together.
Good afternoon. <coughs> the university offers three excellence awards to honor staff members for outstanding contributions in support of Northeast Northeastern's mission and values. The first is the Outstanding Teamwork Award, which recognizes exemplary ability to collaborate across functions. This year's award is presented to the University Events Team, which serves the entire Northeastern community with a can-do attitude. They work to create memorable events that advance Northeastern's mission by consistently showcasing the university at its very best. The University Events Team comprises of the amazing Brian Lutet, Matt Campbell, Lila Eid, Suzanne Feely, Amanda Lapasas, Mary Schlaff, Candace Springer, Natasha Taylor, and, and unfortunately, Matt, Mary, and Amanda were unable to attend today. Thank you. Congratulations. Next is the Innovation Team Award, which recognizes a group with, whose pioneering ideas and achievements promote institutional excellence. This year's award goes to the Visitor Center Team. Informed by research showing that the campus visit is the primary driver in a student's decision to enroll, the team assessed and reinvented every aspect of the college visit. They created and implemented a first-of-its-kind, high-tech, high-touch visitor center that allows prospective students to visualize the many possibilities Northeastern offers to them for global experience and intellectual exploration. First, Carrie Salerno. <laughs> Donald Berthelet. Renee Buck, Michaela Duffy, Kurt Heisenbuttel, Frank Mahoney Jr., Warren Mann, Derek Nowinski, John Ambaletz, Bob Whalen, Wendy Ingwitz, and Nick Zinzer. Congratulations. Finally, our Outstanding Service Award recognizes exceptional customer service and honors a staff member who personifies the Northeastern Ambassador, the go-to person who makes everything work and finds solutions to the most challenging problems. I'm pleased to present this award to David Winch, Director of Student Support Services. David leads the We Care team. David embodies customer service. He helps students, parents, faculty, and staff to resolve concerns, marshalling the appropriate individuals and resources. David, we thank you for your unwavering commitment to excellence in all that you do. Congratulations. Good afternoon. We will now recognize achievements by our esteemed faculty, the backbone of this university. Honorary 
honorees embody the values that make Northeastern a leading global experiential research university. I am honored to present the 2013 Excellence in Research and Creativity Activity Awards, the first going to Sanjeev Mukherjee, Professor of Chemistry and Chemical Biology. <laughs> a world-renowned scientist, Professor Mukherjee's research on the development of a low-cost fuel cell catalyst has international significance. His research group has also developed the original idea between, uh, behind the revolutionary lithium air battery. Because of his highly collaborative work, Professor Mukherjee has been extremely successful in securing large-scale funding from both federal and corporate sources. The second award goes to Arnold Wright, Joseph M. Golem, Research Professor in Accounting. Because of an unfortunate death in his family, Professor Wright is unable to attend today's ceremony. Professor Wright is a prolific scholar and thought leader who is recognized nationally for his transformative contributions to the accounting, audit, and assurance fields. He has held multiple leadership positions in the American Accounting Association and served as editor for premier journals in the field. Professor Wright is a true role model who is committed to mentoring junior colleagues. It is my pleasure to recognize the recipients of the Excellence in Teaching Award and the Klein University Lecturer Award. This year's first Excellence in Teaching Award winner is Julie Hertenstein, Associate Professor of Accounting. <laughs> Students describe Professor Hertenstein's teaching as brilliant and her courses as both intense and impeccably mapped. Her case studies introduce students to the application of accounting principles and concepts in complex, real-world situations. Her students say that she approaches accounting from a strategic perspective that helps them learn to think like managers. <laughs> the second Excellence in Teaching Award winner is Rupal Patel, Associate Professor of Speech Language Pathology and Audiology and Computer and Information Science. Students praise Professor Patel's enthusiasm, teaching style, and passion for linking scientific debates to real-world scenarios. They describe her classes as carefully and creatively structured to foster student success and maintain high interest and engagement. Students applaud the way she motivates them to apply research concepts to clinical work. The 2013 Klein University Lecture Award winner is Daniel Medwed, Professor of Law. As a legal scholar, former public defender, and Innocence Network board member, Professor Medved has dedicated his work toward understanding the role of the prosecutor in the American criminal justice system and formulating safeguards against wrongful conviction. His 2012 book, Prosecution Complex, America's Race to Convict and Its Impact on the Innocent has been received with wide critical acclaim. The rank of University Distinguished Professor is the highest university-wide honor that Northeastern University can bestow. These faculty members have achieved international recognition and distinction for contributions to education, to artistic creativity and expression, and or research that is transformative in their field. They have been selected for this honor by a committee of distinguished scholars, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the committee as well as all others who have participated in the selection process. 
It's now my great pleasure to present to you the 2013 University Distinguished Professors. The first is Phil Brown. <laughs> Phil Brown is University Distinguished Professor of Sociology and Health Sciences, and he joined Northeastern University this past fall. Phil is an internationally known scholar whom colleagues credit with helping to invent the field of medical sociology. His interdisciplinary research addresses the health consequences of environmental hazards and how communities mobilize to cope with environmental threats. He founded the group Hospitals for a Healthy Environment and regularly assesses a wide range of state and federal agencies charged with analyzing and remediating environmental contamination. Congratulations. Our second university distinguished professor is Andrei Zevolensky. Unfortunately, as some of you know, Professor Zevolensky passed away last week. Andrei's daughter, Katya, is here with us and will receive the medal on behalf of her father. Katya, please join us. Katya is accompanied by Andrei's wife, Galina, his parents, his brother, and his cousin. Professor Zevolensky was a brilliant mathematician, globally respected for his research and his tireless efforts to advance the frontiers of modern mathematics. He was regarded by colleagues at the universities around the world as a towering figure in modern algebra and representation theory. His work created new areas of mathematical research. Professor Zevolensky was a Humboldt Research Award winner in 2004 and became a fellow of the American Mathematical Society in 2012. His vision and the impact he made on his field will endure, as will the university's respect and gratitude for his scholarship, intelligence, and friendship. Our third distinguished university professor is Lisa Feldman Barrett. Lisa is the university distinguished professor of psychology. She is one of the world's leading scientific researchers on emotion. Her interdisciplinary effective science lab incorporates methods from social, clinical, personality psychology, psychophysiology, cognitive science, and neuroscience to investigate how emotion is experienced and expressed and how it influences perception and cognition. Her research on reading emotional expression has shaped new approaches to identifying threats in the field of security. Last year, Lisa was honored by being elected a member of the Royal Society of Canada. Congratulations, Lisa. And now would like to invite uh, Professor Lisa Feldman Barrett, our newest, one of our newest university uh, distinguished professors, to come forward and say a few words on behalf of all, all of us. Thank you very much. First, I want to thank President Aoun and Provost Director and um, 
and the College of Science uh, Dean, my Dean, uh, Murray Gibson, and also my Chair, Joanne Miller, and really all of you for this uh, wonderful distinction of University Distinguished Professor here at Northeastern University. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a psychologist and a neuroscientist, and as Provost Director described, uh, my lab studies human emotion, how it works in the brain and the body, and how it directs behavior and thoughts. I started my journey in science from humble beginnings. I grew up in a house where one parent didn't finish high school, and the other worked her way up from a secretary to a bookkeeper. I'm the first person in my family, including my extended family, uh, to attend university, and I worked two jobs uh, all the way through school to pay my way. Um, my path has been twisty. Psychology was not my original plan. I actually thought I would go to medical school. Um, and then, you know, I discovered that that would be a pretty bad match uh, for me. First of all, I question everything, sometimes, you know, relentlessly. Um, and frankly, I'm really bad at taking orders from other people. I got, well, I got a couple of laughs. I hope my lab is laughing hysterically here. Um, so when a friend of mine mentioned that there was this great professor teaching a psychology course, I signed up, and almost 30 years later, here we are. Why would I tell you my personal history? I'm mentioning it because, uh, you know, th I feel like I fit in this university really well. This is a place uh, where, I mean, all universities are a place uh, where people can discover their paths towards the future, and universities change lives, and I think in my case, um, this is definitely so. Today I run a laboratory full of 20 full-time research, uh, researchers. Many of them are here today, and if they could just raise their hands for a minute, just to say hi. Um, every year we mentor over 100 undergraduate students who run experiments in our laboratory, uh, creating that delicate blend of experiential learning and scientific discovery that many of us nurture uh, at this university. It's an exciting time in, the history, uh, in history to be in my field. Psychology is on the cusp of uh, a scientific revolution, instigated uh, by discoveries in neuroscience. And now, you know, that we can peer into living, breathing uh, humans, look at their brains, um, with unprecedented accuracy, we can overturn many of the mistaken assumptions that have been with us really since the time of Plato. To be on the cutting edge of this revolution, it's really important to be at a university that has a, an entrepreneurial spirit and that's willing to take risks. A place that would build you a state-of-the-art laboratory. Thanks, John. <laughs> um, but here's the really important part from my perspective, to continue to support your scientific innovations after you arrive. In my experience, and I'm sure many of you share this sentiment, uh, this describes Northeastern University perfectly. In the three years that I've been here, everyone has been unfailingly supportive in even my most audacious scientific adventures, uh, whether it was founding an internationally recognized affective science initiative or developing a brain-computer uh, interface so that we could capture emotional experiences as people walk around in their everyday lives instead of having them trapped in a laboratory, uh, or sending a research team to sub-Saharan Africa to study how people read emotions in each other in cultures that are very remote from Western influence. There are too many people, I think all of us who are here receiving awards today feel that there are many, many people, you know, that we could thank and too many people that we could, you know, go to do it individually. The point, I think, is that one cannot be a scientist and a scholar by oneself. In part, I have the honor to address you here today because Northeastern is a great uh, university that makes it easy for scientists like me and other scholars who have been given awards today to do their best work. It's not only an environment that's good for us, the, the scientists and scholars, but also for the members of our labs and our groups and our students. For those of us who are mentors and who run large groups or labs, even small ones, uh, we know that we are unable to do what we do without our students and our postdocs. It's really their intellectual input, their tenacity, and their long hours of effort that make science and scholarship possible. And so, you know, I'm, I'm up here today, but really, you know, I'm, it's my, my whole group who, who receives this honor, um, uh, which we really gratefully um, 
uh, gratefully accept. Now, if this event had been held a couple of weeks ago, my com you would be spared the rest of my comments. I would be done, uh, and uh, I would just thank everybody again politely and, and leave. Um, but, uh, but, you know, in the face of two very sad events, I, I just want to say one or two more things. First, there is the unfortunate and untimely death of our esteemed colleague, uh, Dr. Uh, Zewalitsky, uh, who we, he was being honored today along uh, with uh, Phil and the rest of us. And, you know, it's always tragic when a, a field loses one of its luminaries, but it's doubly so when it happens so close to home. Uh, and I know I speak for everyone here when I say to his family uh, that uh, they have our deepest condolences, but also uh, our deepest admiration for, uh, for his work. My, my family is, is here today also, they can raise their hands, and um, you know, they are often the unsung heroes of a scholarly life because they put up with a lot uh, so that we can do what we do. And the other event, of course, uh, is the tragic events that occurred um, at, Bo at the Boston Marathon on Monday. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, you know, I have had a hard time concentrating uh, just on my daily life uh, since then, you know, even though my own personal life was, uh, you know, there were a lot of, a couple of near misses and, and but no tragedies. Um, still, I think we all feel it quite palpably. Um, and I, when considering such suffering, I think it's tempting uh, to think of academic pursuits and an event like this as somewhat trivial uh, or indulgent. But I'm going to share with you uh, today what I always tell my lab in situations like this, which unfortunately have become far too frequent. Um, and that is, and I really, I really firmly believe this uh, to be true, that at times like this, the best that you can do is just to do your part. You know, everybody has to do their part. And for my lab, our part is to figure out how the human mind works. This is not a trivial enterprise for obvious reasons. Um, we... Um, you know, can't take comfort in knowing that our contributions will provide quick fixes to the world's problems. We have to have unbelievable patience, and we also usually forego the immediate reward of feeling like heroes. But still, I think Monday's events bring home with ringing clarity why the science of emotion, what we study, is vital. Um, we, we really must come to understand why people uh, do the things they do if we want to have any hope of making the world a better place than it is. And for as trite as that sounds, I, I think it's true. And for all of you who engage in scholarship, you can think about, you know, what you do in, I think, a very similar way. Um, for all of us here in one way or another, our part is to discover, to understand, and to create better citizens while teaching uh, what we've learned. And it's at times like these, I think, uh, when it's most important to remember that it's a privilege to receive a university education, um, but it's even more of a privilege, I think, to, to give one. And with that, I'll thank you for your attention. I see Lisa's family over there. Could you please stand for a second? I want to ask your daughter whether she inherited your genes in terms of taking orders. Does she like to take orders or not? No. So you see, genes are there. They are. But thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I would like also to ask all the members, uh, all the family members of the awardees to be, please stand and be recognized because you deserve also a part of this recognition. Thank you. Please do that. Thank you very much. You see, this, this was a special moment, a special event, and we are going to continue it by inviting you all to a reception, and uh, let's enjoy the rest of the day together. Thank you very much.
Oh. 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 <laughs>